My videos on prebiotics are among my most popular ones. I recommend resistant starch in a number of my protocols, of course, properly blended and dosed with other prebiotics suited to the needs of the individual, along with targeted ancillary supplementation. And so, since I launched my original resistant starch video in March of last year, I decided to take a look and see what data has been published on resistant starch in the microbiome in the past 11 months. I've got several new papers which reinforce my points from the initial video. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. We start with this study involving 37 subjects who were overweight or obese, taking resistant starch for eight weeks. The researchers looked at weight loss and other parameters, such as here in figure B. The use of resistant starch significantly increased, to no surprise. The two key resistant starch degraders are bromii and bifidobacterium adolescentis. Remember, these two species do not produce butyrate. But what they do is make available the locked up sugars within resistant starch to butyrate producers, a process called cross-feeding. You can also see one species I often rave about, Odoribacter splanchnicus, was significantly decreased with resistant starch. This is one of the key reasons I use multiple prebiotics in my protocols. We want to feed the diverse array of health promoters, not just a select few. The resistant starch-driven change in the microbiome yielded these results, again in just eight weeks. We see a number of markers here, many associated with weight and fat mass and inflammation. The average weight loss was 2.8 kilograms, over six pounds to those in the United States. Just from adding one prebiotic over eight weeks, the authors stated, quote, mechanistically, the resistant starch induced changes in the gut microbiota alter the bile acid profile, reduce inflammation by restoring the intestinal barrier and inhibit lipid absorption. In another new find, here we have a study with a few interesting findings. First, they only used nine grams of prebiotic, all of which was resistant starch, an amount I consider low. Second, the placebo wasn't exactly a placebo. It was nine grams of soy protein and isomalt, which drive changes in the microbiome you can see and see, many for the worse, by increasing streptococcus and escherichia and decreasing carpococcus, allostypes, and subdoli granulum. In D, you can see that nine grams of resistant starch did increase bifidobacterium, but also fusobacterium and decrease allostypes and ehalii. The last interesting finding was this resistant starch group had a significant improvement in frequency of bowel movements, something contrary to general findings. Constipation is really the only symptom someone has, and usually we need to increase the health-promoting beauty producers and decrease the bad actors, something not achieved here, but something I take into consideration. Given that chronic kidney disease affects approximately 14% of the adult population in the United States, these researchers investigated the impact of resistant starch on the microbiome, inflammation, and microbiome-generated kidney toxins. When it came to the two big toxins, Although the resistant starch did not positively impact peak cresol, it did so for endoxyl sulfate. And when it came to the microbiome, resistant starch significantly increased the health-promoting genus subdoli granulum. For more on chronic kidney disease and the microbiome, see that video. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and recommend to friends and family. Also, if you're feeling extra generous, hit the super thanks below. Here we see a study failure using low doses of just 7 grams and 3.5 grams in two arms of the study as compared to placebo. You can see the outcomes here in table one, or I can just quote the authors. Neither resistant potato starch nor placebo had significant effects on mean abnormal bowel symptom scores. Again, this emphasizes that dose is important and not only dose, but the right combination of prebiotics as well, suited to the needs of the individual. Here is another intervention trial to highlight how properly addressing the microbiome can not only result in significant weight loss, but also in a slew of metabolic syndrome markers. In this trial, they did not use a blend like I do. They did, however, use resistant starch, which is one of the prebiotics I recommend. 
They use 40 grams of it per day, which is no small amount, but also not unheard of in trials. So what happened with these NAFLD subjects after four months of therapy? A lot. Let's make no mistake about this therapy. Resistant starch solely addresses the microbiome. There is no other mechanism. I say this because the results are impressive. But then again, every one of my videos is built to demonstrate the power of the microbiome across all forms of health and disease. So here in Table 1, we see significant reductions in total cholesterol, triglycerides, and LDL cholesterol, with a significant increase in HDL. And if we continue with the results from this paper, we see significant improvements in fatty liver, total weight loss, subcutaneous and visceral fat, liver function tests, serum LPS as a marker for gut permeability and a driving force behind inflammation, which we see here represented by TNF-alpha. Imagine how popular a drug would be if it could do all of this. In our last new find, we have another resistant starch metabolic syndrome study. 40 grams of resistant starch or placebo were used for over 12 weeks, and in figures A, B, and C, we can see improvements in blood sugar metrics as well as GLP-1. I've talked about GLP-1 several times. That's how Ozempic works. Butyrate also positively impacts GLP-1. An interesting thing that happened in this study, and I've seen in consultations, is that despite a number of metabolic syndrome markers improving, triglycerides went up. I can't yet explain biochemically why, but I suspect it's a temporary artifact. Resistant starch is a useful member of my toolkit, but it's not for everybody. Not only is it valuable for one to understand the science, but it also helps to have a great deal of experience working with people over many years. As the former director of medical education for a microbiome firm, and now with my own platform, I have that experience. You can spend a lot of time watching my videos and others, starting from scratch in an attempt to get yourself better. Or, instead of reinventing the wheel, you can work with me. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, somewhere around here, you can go to my website where you can schedule a consultation with me. You can also view the protocols. And here, you can watch the next video.